Hello, Greg from Balloon Market here, and welcome to the Balloon Market podcast. And we are joined by Dr. Bob. Now, Dr. Bob, thank you very much for, for coming in. Um, you've obviously done some BMTV filming with yep. us um, the last couple of years. Um, and this is the first time, as I say, we've, we've done a podcast. We are filming this as well, but it's the first time we've actually um, done a, a live, if you like, podcast. So um, I, I'd just like to find out a bit from you about uh, your, how long you've been in the industry, what you've done in the industry, um, how you keep your passion alive in the industry and what people can be doing for their own businesses to be successful in our, our, our nice little small niche industry that is balloons. So that's, that's, how did you get into the industry? Let's start with that. Well, um, going back a ways, um, I was dabbling in magic, still do. And um, I did see somebody on, on a street entertainer playing with balloons, and I thought, oh, oh I quite like that. Because I'm a bit arty anyway, creative and stuff. Mm. And, and my wife managed to get me a couple of balloons, but they didn't last long, and there was nowhere else to find any. Well, my daughter was, actually went a, abroad to America, uh, to, to Disney World, mm -hmm. and um, they, they went to um, Orange County, and there was a party store she brought me a bag a bag of balloons and that was it okay i was trying all sorts and making this trying that and obviously not making anything really successful for a little while but then um i started taking it to work and practicing in my spare time and go in the corner and and and, and have a little play and, and people are thinking what's he doing what was work at the time? Uh, I, I was um, a train driver. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yes. I remember yeah, I you telling me that before. Yeah. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, and of course... Um, <laughs> train uh, driver <laughs> playing with balloons. I hope you weren't... You oh, no, weren't, I wouldn't yeah, do it okay. while I was driving. Oh, right. No, okay. no, definitely not. Yeah, no, uh, We'd have what we call PN brakes, physical needs brakes, and okay. I would mix them in there. Um, sometimes we'd have a brake at the other end route. Yeah. And if I seen somebody on the train that wasn't too happy, when we pulled up, um, I would say, oh, excuse me, can you, you just hang on a second? And I'll make them a quick dog and cheer, and then they go away quite happy. <laughs> but um, I, I was teaching first aid at the time. I was heavily involved in the first aid training and so forth. And um, I, I introduced it into my um, training side as well, which was really good. And people thought it was quite funny and amusing. So, so you were training people in first aid yeah. and how to... Yeah. do a balloon dog or well, you no, were using no. the well i was twisting. using it as, as um, an aid to teaching in some Let's ways say, yeah okay um I, I used to visit schools as well on safety and i used it more on the safety side for children and it registered with them as well so yeah. and it it got me a bit more excited and i think it was within 18 months um my brother-in-law gave me an opportunity to go into a shop with him he he was making uh, memorial stones and I was selling balloons. <laughs> so um, uh, we, we, we did have a nickname called Hatch and Dispatch. <laughs> so, so, yeah. 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 Um, the more I played with balloons, the more excited I got because I, I learned different techniques. Yeah. Um, the difference being, I, I, I do go on a little bit about it, that there was no internet. There was no references apart from mm -hmm. really old books on, like my, Doug Brealey was one which I... Uh, I liked and also Marvin Hardy, which is an American who's a very good uh, balloon twister. Okay. And I went to one of his lectures once as well. And I came away from there really excited. And I had some a bag of balloons on the train on the way back and I was itching to get them out and show people what I'd just learned, you know. Yeah. Um, Did you? Did you get them out on the train? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a couple of children which gave me a great opportunity to say, excuse me, is, is it okay if I give them a, a, a present? It's, it's a balloon mind. Yeah, no, it's fine, did it. And I had people coming up, different carriages asking me yeah. for a balloon. And this lady was watching me opposite. And um, she said, oh, could, could you do me a favor, please? She said, could you make something for my son? He's, he's 13. Uh, I said, okay. Because um, obviously this was a three-hour journey. Mm -hmm. um, I said, yeah, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll make something that was taught by somebody today. And it was basically a, a balloon motorcycle with a man with little goggles on and a scarf. Wow. <laughs> I made that for her and she said, um, have you got a business card? And I actually made one in London at that time because it was the early days. And um, I gave her my card. She said, I'm not promising you. She said, but I might be able to get you some work. I work for the BBC. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, 
some time afterwards, I got a phone call. Could you come along to the BBC studios in, in Landaff? And um, we'd like to talk to you about doing something for us. Um, and I asked what it was about and so forth. And it was um, to do uh, something for children in need, mm -hmm. Pudsy Bear. So I thought, what am I going to do here? So I thought about, I made a few sculptures, different teddy bears and a few other things to show them. They loved them. I said, what were you looking for? And they said, we were looking for a big bear. How big could you make it? I said, how big do you want it? <laughs> and then it, it went from there. And I said, well, look, I'll go away and, and work on some prices for you. And, and that's what I did. And when I left, I thought, oh, God, how am I going to make this bear? <laughs> and that's how I did it. <laughs> so you it. didn't know. You, you had no idea. I had a idea rough idea, you, but it was like, how am I going to achieve this? And, and, and that's how the big job started. I think sometimes you've got to do that, though. Yeah. I think you've got to take something on that you've no idea or you've got an inkling of how yeah. to do and then just feel the fear and just do it and just give yeah, it a go. it was scary, but we went on live and the, f the funny thing was I wouldn't let them start filming until I repaired a couple of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> they were going nuts. So you held back children yeah. in need. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So uh, after 25 years, mm -hmm. how do you how do you keep the, the passion alive? I don't know. I just, I just get the fun. Well, I entertain as well with balloons yeah. and I do a little bit of that in the shop when children come in. Obviously, they, they need to be occupied sometimes mm -hmm. and... Uh, I just love to create things. Um, I really do love sculpting with 260s, 350s, uh -huh. and well, any any bloom really, but I think that that's my main passion. And I love to see the results of, of my works, you know, and uh, the, yeah. the, the, the reaction that it causes. So they yeah. say that if you love what you do, you never do a day's work in your no. life. So have you have you never done a day's work since you started working <laughs> with well, balloons? Well, more or less, yeah. But, you know, sometimes it's been quite strenuous, but I, yeah. I, I do still love it, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really do. So what pieces you've obviously... I, the, the, my favourite piece of yours has got to be Darth Vader. I'm, yeah. I'm a Star Wars fan, yeah. and the Darth Vader you did was how tall? Seven feet? He was, like yeah, yes, I think it was just over seven feet tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's that's amazing. I mean, Thank you me. were approached by the press and everything, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I was that? afterwards, so. yeah. They'd done an interview with me live on TV as well, so which was really good, you know. So what, what's what's the thing, the, the piece that you are most proud of? Ooh, um, there is a one. The, 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 I suppose... Um, I refer to Darth Vader most recently, mm -hmm. and a few years ago we did the second Bloom Festival in the UK. Mm -hmm. The first one was, I think, in 2011, and then the next one was 2013. So I think they're my favourites because they, they involve using mass blooms and big, big sculptures, which I love to do yeah. when I go to the, well, I used to go to the conventions and compete and stuff and teach, and I love that. Um, I think my giraffe. I think oh, that's one of I my. I remember you showing me that. Yeah, it, it was the sheer size and scale of it, and planning and designing it mm -hmm. all in a small space, which yeah. was, I think, and how it turned out, I, I was just, it looked so realistic. I, I just loved it. How tall was it? He was 22 feet 6 inches tall and 8,000 blooms on there. Wow. Yeah, so I was really oh, pleased with that. But there was also a set around it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And the first one I was involved with, um, John Bowler from Bapia, who was a, mm -hmm. a great support, you know. Um, yeah, so Fantastic. that was good. So if somebody was starting out in the industry, yeah. um, or relatively new to the industry, maybe been in the industry for a year, what three tips would you, would you give them? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> them? Good, good tips. What do you wish you would have known? Three things you wish you would have known at the beginning. Oh, right, okay. Um, I think it would have been good to actually go on a training course. Okay. I know I do train, but I think it would have helped me a lot more. So you didn't go on a training course to start with? No, no, no. Oh. Um, it, was, it was, I think, a year and a half, two years. Roughly that time, there was a, a Welsh Bloon Academy that I went to, and they said that I was doing stuff. But it was nice. They actually polished my little rough edges, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and she paid me a compliment at the time, which was great, you know. And saying that my work, you know, I, I was doing the right thing and to give me confidence mm -hmm. and it just helped me steamroller on. The other thing I think was important is business because I didn't know what I was doing. I, I had a rough idea and I think it's important to, but I, what I did do, I did do a lot of research and I think today a lot of people don't do enough research. I, so what sort of research are you talking I, about? I, I phoned um, the Bloom companies were about um, um, 
one I dealt with a lot was Ace Bloons in, in, in Bournemouth, but they've finished now. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a company up in Merthyr, um, Bloon Artistry, and one or two other people that I, I talked to um, about what they sell, the prices, and I, I went to different, I went to Cardiff, I went to Bregend, and I looked at different shops that were selling, with the, like the party shops at that time, and I sort of picked up some ideas. I think I wish I had some guidance in in business i think that's really important because it's okay having the passion for balloons but you've got to have the business sense because you could just collapse i think it's one of those things that when you start in business you know nothing about business that ironically oh, yeah and it's it's very much a journey you learn but, as you as you go yeah i i did approach the banks and at the time there was the welsh development agency i mm-hmm. think it was called then and asked them, and I showed them my little portfolio that I had put together on prices and what I could make and stuff. And they said it wasn't financially viable to invest in. Mm-hmm. I'm here today. Yeah. You know, so I financed it myself. It's a business model they wouldn't understand. So. Yeah. yeah. And it was early days then as well. Yeah. So, um, okay. Yeah. So you'd say, um, get some business training. Yeah. For sure. Okay. What else would you recommend? Business training. And think about pricing. Mm. That is one that I always talk about. And it's important to think, because you've got to think about all your expenditure. People think uh, just that their product and they add a little bit onto this. It's not like a normal retail store. Yeah. Because it's it the, the products are reasonably priced. Mm-hmm. I don't like to say cheap. <laughs> uh, reasonably priced. And um, your time is valuable mm. because you have to do so many jobs. You're a salesman. You, you, um, you're an accountant, you're the, the account- marketing that's manager, right. you do yeah. everything, so, so many hats. Yeah. yeah, put all that together. If you were uh, employing somebody, gosh, wouldn't you earn some money? I wish I could earn that much money. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah I, I think you need to think a lot about where you want to go as well, because obviously there's the retail side. I did start in the uh, twisting and magic and entertaining, so that gave me a lot of confidence because mm-hmm. people haven't got confidence to sell. So again, training, go back to training. You know, there's lots of courses available that you can go on with Pioneer and yeah. and everything. But be sensible as well. You know, I worked hard in the early days and worked long hours. I think sometimes I was a busy fool, but um, I've learned from that now. Um, I think that's that's the key thing. As long as you learn yeah. as you're going, you can't be expected to know everything. You're, no. you're going to get pricing wrong. You're going to get you're going to get things wrong. However. It's ironic you say that people don't do the research these days, yeah. even though they've got the internet, because I think, it's the yeah. easiest time ever to d- research anything. So, yeah. Well, I, I do. I, I look at pictures, mm-hmm. and when I'm away, sometimes I look at that. I think, oh, that's interesting, and I might take a picture of that to maybe do that later on and make mm. something. But the point I was making is that if I don't know how to do something, I will try and make that before I do anything. Yeah, yeah. And and play around with it. When you're making it yourself, you make mistakes. Oh, I won't do that again. Yeah. yeah. And then you, oh, that's uh, you. You learn something different. Yeah. When we go, to, we we do um, j- balloon jams, and we've got a uh, um, Southwest Balloon University, and we join up with fellow entertainers, and we share ideas, and we have competitions. Mm-hmm. We meet up once a month. And we learn a lot with each other. And mm. I still learn loads. I don't know it all. I've forgotten loads as well. Mm. But it's nice to be reinforced with that. And that keeps my passion going as well. So you would say then, the, going back to three points, the first one would be training. Yes. I guess business and yeah. and balloon training as all well. All aspects. Uh, yeah. All aspects of training. Um, and the second, <laughs> give it a go. Yeah. And the third, look at your pricing and, and consider everything. So yeah. we, we do have a pricing tool um, that we've got on, on the website. Dr. Bob, I like to ask people that come in and have an interview more fun right. questions okay. as well. So you I'm going to ask back, you a, yeah. fun, a few fun questions. First of all, what's your favourite food? Favourite food? Yes. Oh, um, I, I, I do like mash, beans and sausages. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Soup bowl, you know, her favourite food is? No. Rice. Is it? Plain rice. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. I was quite surprised. Um, anyway, okay. The, pl- the person, if you had your, your ideal dinner party, who would you invite? Who be, would I invite? Yeah, oh, gosh. That's, it could be one or two people. It could be 10 people, whoever you like. Oh, right. Okay. I, I think um, Buster Keaton. Okay. Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. Um, more modern. I, I also 
I, I spoke about him yesterday, Martin Luther King. Yeah. yeah. And why, why would you invite that? Well, I, the, well I, I loved the old films, and Buster Keaton was a revolutionary and unfortunately died a pauper. Uh -huh. But it would be lovely to have a conversation about his creativity and his ideas and the things he came up with, they were fantastic, you know? Well, I think it's just a yeah. creative mind. You look at the world in a slightly different way. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Martin Luther King? Um, yeah. You know, the man was... I wish more people had just listened to him. Mm. He had so much to say. Mm. Yeah, and too many fools around, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dog or cat? Dog. Do you have a dog? No. No. We we um, were brought up with dogs. Okay. Um, my mother and father used to breed toy, toy poodles. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. And the last question. Favorite balloon to use? Apart from a two sixty three fifty, is bubbles. 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 So if it, your absolute favorite, what would it be? Two six two sixty. Oh two, gosh. Oh, three fifty. <laughs> if you had to choose one balloon, one you balloon. could only ever use <laughs> ever again. That's cruel. Two sixties. Two sixties. Dr. Bob, thank you so much for coming in and doing this with us today. I really appreciate it. And thank you for listening. Uh, we hope you will join us again soon.